Yeah. Disco cactus horse sand. You said they're a pain in the ass to grow. That's why you got to graft them. Because, yeah, they grow in that, that sugar sand, that yeah, bleach yeah. white sand. Yeah, I actually get a lot of seed off. No, the, the other pain in the ass, other than me not having successful batches of seed, is these only produce so much biomass over their lifespan. Okay? Uh -huh. You got seeds and, right here, too. Yeah, Don't let that guy. Yeah, i got to get in here and pick these off. This is from just eh, maybe a month ago, I guess. Did you have to hand pollinate them or and what? they got to be hand pollinated, and I always forget. So I'll come out the next morning, and there's all these flowers that are wilting away, and it's too damn late. They're moth-pollinated in nature, right? I, I assume. They smell like... What? Uh, uh, some of them are sweet, but a lot of them sound like uh, smell like uh, a fruit that's gone. Oh, wow. You know, just slightly sweet and rotting. And so that's how you just pollinate them, just a really... What kind of brush are Is it just like Th a... Those are makeup applicators. Oh, wow. So oh, we, you shit. Know, okay, there got, you go. They don't last any time. They just fall apart. So I'll be... I've probably got... You know, part of my body is is microplastics, really. <laughs> but it's it's got that little pad it's, rather than the bristles. Yeah, look at right. that. Right. Well, I mean, you know, at C and J, they you know he uh, uh, um, uh, Jim would tell me about the the kind of um, it's not ferret, it's a it's a mustelid um, hair bristles that they get. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember the name of the in, in dwarf. Um, Retusus retusus from Mina San Rafael. The the parents of these are in the next building we're mm -hmm. going to. You'll see all the what they turn into. God, what a remarkable plant! I'd love to see the habitat too. Just weird fucking limestone, probably. You know, weird limestone. I don't think any any of them don't live in limestone. Yeah. I've got a few plants that grow in pure gypsum, not mm. not area carpus, but mm. uh, but for some of them like uh, Boolianus. Oh, that's so weird. Fucking no, turbinic. The next one. Boolianus grows in pure gypsum. And these uh -huh. like ridges of gypsum and they get these snaky little necks that they grow. I've seen, I think I've seen photos of some of these turbinic carpets that have that tapering base and they yeah. grow up through cobbles. Yeah, right. not cobbles, but you know, talus, yeah. limestone talus. God, the form know. implies, you know, the habitat. I just, I love that kind of stuff. Where the Trypanocarpus are apical. Right, so pectinate spines, pectin like a comb, just like Pachyseres pectin aboriginum. Right, the, the, you look at the fruit on them, it's all comb like. Yeah, the turbinocarpus, spine. but that's a trait you get in a lot of these weird uh, Mexican cacti, these limestone Mexican cacti with those yeah, probably, pectinate spines. Who knows what it does? Yeah, and I mean, you go to Baja and there's all these plants with these big thick spines on them mm -hmm. that uh, probably get dew. Yeah, uh, fog the, catchment of some kind. Yeah, see yeah. This? So there's, uh, you know, naked uh, Asterius. Who, wait, wait, what is this again? Is this? That's more of the same thing. Oh, okay. Pseudopectinatus. Neobacea. So that's a gypsum endemic, huh? From that one is, yeah. Wow. I mean, and, and this is just the Areocarpus nursery. Look at these little and guys. These, are, these guys are from, uh, these are 14 months old. Wow. So they're... They're doing their thing. What yeah. species? I mean, all different kinds, hybrids, you, or what? You name it, it's here. Wow. Uh, I need to. I produce about eighty thousand Aricarpus seed a year. Uh, I don't. I certainly don't sow it all. I uh. like to sell it. Um, it would take up. Well, it doesn't take up a lot of room now, but I could use it in the form of money. I'll start buying seeds. Look at all that. God, look at all the Aricarpus. You know what this? It, the fragrance is hilarious here from these little. <laughs> These rotting meat flowers, these stapeliads. You said that's a huernia? Huernia, yeah. Wow. So do you, are most of these dioecious or what are they? Uh, a lot of them are. Yeah. Um, not all of them. It's um, a goddamn bonafide uh, euphorbia. Then. Yeah, I, uh, let's see. Well, that isn't. But you know, a lot of them have both sex, are monoecious. They actually have male and female flowers. But, um, yeah, these are all separate sexes, which is a pain in the ass. Mm. Uh, when you want to hybridize stuff, you don't really have the option. <laughs> when you got two, like uh, I had this and uh, the big one over there, and I was going to breed them together, and they're both girls, so you uh. can make plant porn, I suppose. But uh, <laughs> it comes so what? What are these? This is um, Sarcocolum paniculinum. It's in the uh, Geraniaceae. Geraniaceae. They, uh, Geraniaceae. They're endemic to M Namibia, and I guess like half the population. Uh, Collecting, notwithstanding, half the population's dead because of prolonged drought over there. Uh -huh. um, and these are winter growers, but I keep them in leaf all year because if you let them go to sleep, sometimes you can't wake them back up again. Oh yeah, look at the look seedling oaks. And these, how, how old is this well witchy? That is probably forty. Jesus. Uh, but the male with the three leaves is only about twenty. 
Wow, so you've got a male and a female, and you're able to get seed out of it. That's yeah, although great. that seed is from somebody else, because oh. I, but I do make my own seed. Yeah. How old are these guys right here? Uh, two those years? are 14 months. Oh, wow. Not even two years yet. That's incredible. All right, so these are not full sun in the summer here. You're treating them like Which those leafy green sun. Yeah. No, they just are, they're in here. Right. right. Yeah, there's no reason you couldn't grow them in full sun. I know some people up in Phoenix that have them out in the ground. Um, you know, and then they, but where where you are, it gets pretty cold, I'm assuming. They need good moisture. It actually doesn't get that cold where I am. It doesn't freeze. No. Nah. I mean, occasionally. It needs, it needs, the stratification well, you, you, you method learn, is just time. It's just time. <laughs> it just it has to uh, over ripen. And, and if you look at that and a lot of the other stuff, the seed, the seed needs to run around. It doesn't need to get scraped up, but it needs to get interred. You know, yeah, the, and then next year it comes up. Yeah, we just saw things. ones in situ they grow in near astrophytum that were huge, but it's again, that's a humid climate with a lot of clay. And of course, of course they got well, that. If I, if I can get them to that big in a year, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually going to leave that pot full, uh, um, planted mm -hmm. and see what they end up looking like two years in a pot. Explosive dehiscent, that's why that bag that's is great. on there because these, oh, these explode. I, I was, I had a couple fruits on my desk once and I, I just started hearing this pop, pop. <laughs> Shit flying everywhere. I'm like, who's throwing shit? Yeah, was... I, put, I put him in the packs. Yeah, he'd flowered them smaller than that. Yeah, for Fulcuria. So, hope, hope, hope springs eternal. Fulcuria propusia. And this is another limestone endemic, right? Outside Oaxaca? Yeah. Oh, God. That's, such, that's just the most beautiful plant, man. Jesus but, Christ. See, ironically, fasciculata is the next most cold hardy one. And it's fairly, tr I mean, fairly far south, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, here's the, uh, the tub full of. of uh, 14 month old plants of this. Oh, of Hotrophic. So, yeah. when you grow these, I mean, what are they? What, is, did you get one palmate leaf? What do the cotyledons look like? Oh, it's just two big uh, round cotyledons. Oh, just no a shit. pair of them. And then they'll kick, kick up the normal ones mm -hmm. just right away. Um, but these these tubs come on, the system comes on every morning. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, to, they're sometimes thirsty. I'd run them twice a day, and so these just said, "Hey, this that works for me." Yeah, South all those South Texas plants, man, they need a lot more moisture than than most of the Sonoran stuff. So that, Look at these oh, monster no, obergonia. Look at this uh, shit. This is hilarious. Is that, is that you get a little? Yeah. You got a pup coming off one of the. Uh, yeah, when aerials. they get old, they get sort of freaky. God, that's huge. This the size of that is wild. Yes, so yeah, seed. 93, that's only, uh, do the math, 30 years. Yeah, so 30 year old seed germinated <laughs> individuals of uh, uh, there's, Lumania. There's, there's Pectinatus, there's um, Multicostatus, there was some uh, Crebispina, and then the, the Flavidospina. Who's this guy? That's Flavidospina. Uh, Flavidospina? Flavidospina. These, these cacti that yellow, grow. One means thick. They grow on. Rock outcrops surrounded by tropical deciduous forests. They're not deserts, not desert plants. Just incredible Brazilian genus yeah, of cacti. You know, they, somebody did a paper on the pH that those grow in, mm -hmm. and it's all over the place. Some of them are acid, some of them are base. Jesus. So they're not like uh, like areas. And how, what is, this is seed grown, got, of course. Just, oh, yeah, that's how old? Seed. Uh, 83. Wow, Jesus Christ. So a 40 year old. Oh, wait, wait, no, sorry. 93. 93. So a 30 year old Areocarpus. That's just, they're so happy, man. Actually, it's... it could be younger than that. So, so there's a place called Las Tablas in Chihuahua, I think, um, that has Retusus furfuraceus. And I got a whole bunch of ancient field collected plants, about this big, but they had been collected in the 80s and put in chicken wire slings for five years mm. in South Texas, where they just watered the plants bare root in these slings mm -hmm. um, and I got those in 91 and these are the progeny from then and a little later and I've been selectively breeding the purest plants for different phenotypes because mm. this is from the same population as this that pointy thing is as the generic ones holy over there. hell so that those alleles were in there. That those traits just, were it, in the gene. Uh, if you look at the pa uh, pictures in habitat, they're just all over the place. They're there's in that population. Just on. tons of variation so in that. And this was one of the newest ones that popped up, uh, that offsets like crazy. I call this one Fuster Clock. When did you germinate this? Uh, this is probably from from '93 uh, ish or so. It mm. could it could have been younger than that. But she is. Uh, this gene has popped up in her progeny. Where they offset like crazy. Mm. God damn, incredible! And this is you said these are these how old again? These lawyers eighty eight. Wow. 
Fucking remarkable, man. <laughs> Just the, the happiest cacti I've ever seen. The happy cactus. I mean, it should be the name of a breakfast the cafe. Like this is, I mean, I these little Luchtenbergias yeah, you yeah, got. Yeah, and who's who are these guys? That's, that's the, that thing that you were pointing at in the other building that were shaggy with the long necks on them. Well, oh, the Turbenicarpus? Turbenicarpus. Uh, yeah, it's now Pseudomacrochelia. Oh, yeah. They grow in, they must grow um, in Talus. They must yeah, grow in talus, I think, then. Jesus. Little yawr and eggy eyes. Wow, they're, they're so cute. Fun. Diversity of form. Endless forms most beautiful. Look at this shit. Look at that. Study and evolution through through cacti as a model. So this was field collected, which, of course, we don't do anymore. But this was this was pre-CITES field collected. You said when? Like late 60s? Like late 60s, yeah. Jesus. It's so... It's so happy. So these plants... When you go into the field, some of these are obviously 100 years old. I... Don't know how long they have. So if you look at over on the other table, there's the two Pelociferous strobiliformis there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the one, the big one, is an is same batch of pre cites field collected. The other one I started from seed in 1981. Oh, Jesus. And it's hanging in there. Which is this is the 81. That's the 81. So that's a seed grown 40 year old plant, 42 year old plant. It occurs over, if, it, if something was going to be endangered, it would be this, but it's so far out, nobody's dug it's it up. It's middle and of nowhere. People have collected have made tons of seeds. Yeah, so. I've seen herbarium specimens of this in the Sewell Ross herbarium. Yeah, this, the, these are the young mm -hmm. uh, spines, you there's a, the there's trichomes, and then when they get older, they turn into see, that. Look at this. This is... Echinoceres veritiflorus canis. See this little guy? That's nuts. So this genus is Copiapoa from South America, from Chile. The genus is endemic to Chile, actually. And it's not a hot desert. They're from fog deserts. Very dry, not that hot. Max temp is like 80, 85 in some of these habitats. But he's actually able to grow them here in Tucson despite the heat. They just need more water. And they, I mean, these, are, these look fucking immaculate, too. These plants are very healthy. Seed was germinated in 2007. So that's, I don't know, a little more than 15 years old. 15-year-old copes. Again, form implies habitat. See that? That's a that's a cactus with spines that are mimicking grass. It's a it's a form of uh, mimicry. So Turbinocarpus is the genus. What was the species again? Uh, uh, Graminospina. Graminospina for that Mimic one, and then grass. this, and then this one. What's what's this one right there? This that one? was yeah. Uh, Flavifloris. Flavifloris. Yeah. But either way, it's the same thing. It's just blending in, looking like dead dead grass. Okay, so this this right here is this guy, but it's a crested it's version a crest. that West Texas Echinoceros, and you said it's got because why? Why did why does a seed come true to form for cresting? It's just the po population is like that. That there are crested plants in the population. So, oh, okay. Uh, so that allele just must be they must have a high allele frequency in the population. It's just right. very widespread. Yeah. 